Hi everyone, in this video I am going to explain about different topics of metal forming process. First of all what is metal forming process? It is the process of producing the components through deformation. The necessary deformation in a metal can be achieved by the application of large forces only or by heating the metal and applying small force. The forces may be tensile, compressive, shear or combination of all these forces. During the metal forming process, we have to apply stress that should be in the range between above yield point and below the ultimate stress because if you apply higher stresses that, that is more than ultimate stress then, then the material will break and if you apply less than yield stress then that material will not get plastic deformation. In that case we will not get the exact sh required shape of the component. Some of the examples of metal forming process are rolling, extrusion, wire drying, tube drying, forging and some other process. Next, some of the objectives of metal forming processes. These are mainly to reduce the original block or ingot into semi-finished or finished part. To refine the grain structure and to achieve optimum mechanical properties, then and to distribute the impurities throughout the metal. Because of this one, we will get some advantages. And to eliminate voids and porosity to produce dense parts. Next, some of the advantages of metal forming processes. Here, wastage of material in metal forming processes almost negligible or zero we can say. The grain orientation is possible in metal forming processes. Because of grain orientation we will get some advantages like me mechanical properties will improve. Metal forming processes are useful to convert materials from isotropic to anisotropic in some metal forming process, good surface finish and close dimensional tolerances are possible. Strength and hardness of material will become higher than the original material in case of metal forming process. Time taken for producing component will be less. Mainly metal forming processes are classified into two types based on the working temperature. First one is cold working, second one is hot working process. In case of cold working, the operating temperature will be the less than recrystallization temperature. Then that process is called cold working process. And if the processing or if the deformation of the material is taking place at a temperature higher than recrystallization temperature of that material, then the process is called hard working process. Here we can observe new term recrystallization temperature. It is a minimum temperature at which the formation of new crystals or new grains has been completed. What is the meaning of new grain? Whenever the physical or mechanical and bo or both behavior of the grains is completely changing, it is called as new grain or new crystal formation. For example, some of the methods of cold working, tube drawing, wide drawing, bending, blanking and piercing, cold rolling, embossing, these all are comes under cold working process. That means here we will operate, we will maintain temperature below the recrystallization temperature of that material. Advantages of cold working process. Here mainly it increases the strength and hardness of the material due to strain hardening. We can discuss about this strain hardening phenomena in our next slide. Since working is done in cold state, no oxides will form. Because of this one, better dimensional accuracy is achieved and good surface finish also we can, we can achieve. It is easier to handle cold parts and it is also economical for smaller sizes, smaller size parts in case of cold working. But it also has some limitations, those are, it is useful for only small size components and here, in case of cold working, we had applied greater forces 
to get the rectified deformation and the grain structure is not refined and residual stresses have harmful effects in case of coal working and tooling cost also will be high in case of coal working. These are some limitations in case of coal working process. Next, as I told, strain hardening. It is a main phenomena to increase strength properties of a coal work material. What is mean by strain hardening? It is a process in which the strength of a metal increases due to deformation at a temperature lower than the recrystallization temperature. The increase in resistance of plastic deformation is known as strain hardening or work hardening. When a metal is plastically deformed, new dislocations are created in a material. The density of dislocation grows bigger due to their interactions with one another. Finally, these, do, these dislocations become entangled and impede each other's motion and resist further movement. Also, dislocations pile up at grain boundaries causing further barrier to deformation. Under fully cold work condition, the strength and hardness of metal reached a maximum and ductility to minimum. At this stage, deformation is not possible and any increase in the force results in fracture. That's why to avoid this one, we have to do heat treatment. This heat treatment will be in three stages. Here we can observe three stage heat treatment. Generally, we will do handling process to overcome the earlier effect of cold working process. Here, heat treatment will be in three stages. First one recovery, next one recrystallization, third one grain growth. If you increase the temperature of the cold work component, then final, then initially, Residual stresses will reduce. Here we can see in this graph, residual stresses will decrease up to this, up to this location. Residual stresses will decrease, and these are the cold work, cold work material grains. Here, because of the dislocations density, we can get more residual stresses. But after heating. After increasing temperature, these residual stresses will decrease. Up to here, we can see decreasing residual stresses. After this zone, if you increase further temperature, if you increase temperature further, nucleation will start at different zones. Because of these nucleation, new grains or new crystals will start forming and the properties of the material will change compared to previous and water properties all will be eliminated. At this stage we can observe internal stresses are almost zero and here in case of recovery stage hardness and strength properties are almost constant but after recrystallization that is after uh, after recovery stage in re recrystallization zone drastic change in the hardness and strength we can observe and drastic increase in the ductility also we can observe. In this recrystallization zone, new crystals or new grains will form because of the nucleations at the different zones. And if you increase the temperature further, that means after recrystallization zone, we can observe one more zone that is grain growth. Because of that increase in the temperature, these grains will start growing by joining at adjacent grains and it will become bigger in size. At this zone, grain size will increase. That one we can see uh, with, the, with the yellow line. This is this indicates grain size, grain size growth or grain growth rate and in this zone almost a constant hardness and strength will be maintained. I would like to explain about recovery, recrystallation and grain growth again in simple manner. If a cold working metal is heated to a sufficient high temperature, it regains its original properties. As I said earlier, recovery it is the initial stage in which internal stresses are eliminated 
and there is no appreciable reduction in strength and hardness. In the recovery stage, these locations inhilated each other by migrating into lower energy planes and rearranging themselves and this process is called polygonization. Okay, next process and next stage is called recrystallization stage. The process of creating new grains in a cold working metal is known as recrystallization. Recrystallization temperature is lowest for pure metals and is generally raised by the presence of other elements that means alloying elements or impurities. Generally, decrystallization temperature is much below the, below the melting temperature and it is about one third to one, one by two, one, one third to half of the melting temperature of that material. Recrystallization temperature is largely depends on the degree of previous cold deformation and temperature at which the deformation is carried. Severe cold work will generally results in lower recrystallization temperature. Next stage we can talk about that is grain growth. Grain growth results due to further increasing the temperature as I said earlier or keeping the structure at high temperature for longer duration we can get grain growth. Large grain size metals are highly ductile but of low strength and hardness. These are things we have observed in that graph already. Next, hard working. As I said, metal forming processes are basically classified into two types based on working temperature. One is cold working, another one is hard working. Now we will discuss about hard working. Under the action of heat and force, here we are heating and at the same time applying force. When the atoms reach a certain higher energy level, the new crystals start forming which is termed as recrystallization in case of hot working. Actually what is meant by hot working? If you process or if you deform any material above the recrystallization temperature of that material, then that process is called hot working. Recrystallization destroys the old grain structure deformed by mechanical working and entirely new crystal in fact start nucleating at the points of serious deformations. In hard working, the temperature at which the working is completed is important since any extra heat left after working will aid in the grain growth. This gives poor mechanical properties. That's, that means the temperature at which we are doing hard working process is very important to get required properties and some of the hard working methods are tube drying, wine drying, forging, rolling, spinning, extrusion. These all are the hard working processes. Some of the advantages of hard working are here we will get refinement of grains and due to refinement properties will be improved and porosity of ingot is eliminated to a great extent because of higher temperature and at the same time application of higher force, higher amount of forces and uniformity and directional properties are improved in case of hot working it, and it is fast and economical. Power required is less because we are heating materials above the recrystallization temperature that's why if power or indirectly force required is less but it also has some disadvantages uh, like uh, in case of hot working material may get oxidation rapid oxidation may happen poor, because of that one poor surface finish will get will get and close tolerances cannot be maintained that means dimensional accuracy will not be good in case of hot working and tooling and handling costs are high and life of tools used in is uh, very less and handling we can say handling is very difficult in case of hard working compared to 
whole working process. Thank you.